we are going to dive in. Uh, as always, Alex Camilio, Craig Grant, bringing these workshops to you on Mondays. And today we are going to be talking about uh, generating business with event marketing. Um, how you can use events to, you know, to to dive in and generate business. And you know what? I want to give one little sort of caveat here, and I'll I'll dive back with you, Craig. Um, Obviously, these this all comes with a caveat, which is in some areas of the U.S., of Canada, of different places uh, around the world, m different mandates are not open yet to be hosting a lot of in-person events. If that is your area, obviously abide by any regulations. Um, but Craig and I are trying to look forward here in what's going on. I know Vermont, uh, where I am, has made it to an 80% uh, vaccination rate. So we are, awesome. we've done incredible in our state and mandates are getting lifted. And we are basically um, a couple things here and there, but mostly back to things being open um, and, and things being back to, uh, you know, having events, having, you know, bigger events, things like that. So if this isn't for your area, obviously, you know, don't do it yet, but we wanted to get ahead of the ball here because it is stuff that people are going to be diving back into in the coming months. Um, and certainly by this fall are things that people are going to be doing again uh, and doing in a lot of depth. So we want to make sure that, as always, our community is available uh, and ready for that when it happens. So, um, all right, now let's talk about generating business with event marketing. Um, so Craig and I have seen countless agents do this with a lot of success. We're going to show you today some of the agents that have been very successful with it, give you some examples, um, of events that have worked really well and even get a little bit further into, well, making those events digital as well. So you expand the presence of them, um, and, uh, and, you know, can, can always reach more people. Now, as always, um, this is being brought to you by two groups, and I want to mention those quickly. The first is the Real Estate Technology Institute. Uh, Craig is the founder over there, as well as I'm an instructor. Um, if you are interested in learning anything to do with technology uh, or marketing in the uh, real estate practice, definitely check out reti.us. Some of you might already have a subscription to it. There are a lot of associations that have picked it up as a member benefit. So definitely check out if you already have a subscription. But if not, uh, head over there. There are literally thousands of videos um, to improve your tech and, uh, and marketing presence. So check that out. On the other hand, my organization, Service for Life, um, I'm CEO here uh, at Service for Life. If you are interested in building a 100% referral-based uh, and repeat-based business where you are not worried about chasing leads and where the next deal is coming from and all that sort of stuff, definitely check out Service for Life. We have been helping agents do that um, and build their business to that point for years and years, long before even my time at Service for Life, but we've continued to do it successfully for over 20 years at this point. So. Uh, if you're interested in something like that, definitely check out Service for Life at serviceforlife.com. All right, so we're going to dive in. And as we mentioned, we're talking about generating business with event marketing. And I'm going to kick this over to you here, Craig, um, because, you know, you and I both talk a lot about this, but it really comes down to relationship-based marketing in this business yes. um, over a long period of time and, and building that, just like we were talking about, that repeat and referral business, this is another way to do it. So I'm gonna let you dive into talking a little bit about that relationship-based marketing. Absolutely, and, and when I teach marketing, I always say, this is really, to me, the biggest return on investment is relationship-based marketing. Um, and that's part of it is events, but, one of the things that you really have to just understand, this is not just a real estate thing, uh, but loyalty amongst consumers to businesses now is really gone. It's not like the old days where people were so loyal to the brand or the realtor they work with. Loyalty really has evaporated in all businesses. And the analogy that I always use is, if somebody can save a dollar on Amazon versus buying it locally, they save that dollar every single time. Or if it doesn't even save them a dollar, but saves them the hassle of driving to the store and dealing with people, they say they do that. Uh, I mean, honestly, there's a reason why even before the pandemic, Amazon was wiping almost every retail sector and outside of real retail as well. 
is because people are not very loyal anymore. So what it's really about is we're not in no way saying that it's not worth your time or worth your energies to do relationship building. We're actually saying the exact opposite. If there's not a friendship in place, in the real estate world, you really have become a transaction to your customers. You've got to make sure you're building and fostering relationships because that is where the loyalty really happens once there's a relationship in place. So to kind of give you an idea, move on to the next one. Some of the ideas we're going to cover in here is all about relationship-based marketing. I mean, it's things like community involvement, events and sponsorships. Not You don't have to throw your own parties. We're going to talk about that as well. But you being involved in your community, whether it's charitable work or you're a member of the Chamber of Commerce, whatever it is, involvement in your community and being present in your community is a big piece of relationship-based marketing. And then you, of course, could be participating in some of their events, not just throwing your own. But another big piece of relationship-based marketing is throwing your own, kind right. of fishing parties and events. And Craig, I just wanted to, to touch on something there because I think you hit yep. on something that is hugely important for a lot of agents, but they don't necessarily think about, which is that when we talk about event marketing, the event doesn't have to be yours. And I just yep. want to highlight what Craig said there because it's so important to remember that people often forget that just because the event isn't theirs doesn't mean it's not an opportunity for you. So keep that in mind, uh, you know, as you're going out there and seeing the different events that you can get involved in with your community and sort of piggyback on um, without having yep. to do all the work of putting an event together. Awesome. Great, great Absol point, Craig. Yep, yep absolutely. Uh, and then the next piece would be like, if you are, whether it's you piggyback on someone else's event or if you are organized and throwing your own, um, there's another piece of you're now making your clients, not just friends with yourself, but hopefully friends with each other. So if we move on to the next slide, okay, because the idea is if you're bringing together all these people and now they connect and they become friends, well, those make honestly the most loyal friends. You're building your own community of raving fans who are friends with each other. And Absolutely. that's the real idea behind relationship-based marketing. Yep. And there's some really cool stats that we both use in a lot of our presentations that talk about exactly that concept of relation-based marketing. So first yep. of all, the, the percent that said they would definitely or probably uh, recommend their agents for future service. That's always great, right? They love you. They, of course, they're going to, they're going to, they're going to uh, recommend you and send your business your way, right? Yep. But we go a step further and we said, how many found their agent through a referral from a friend, neighbor, or relative, um, or used an agent they had worked with before to buy or sell a home? Now, that's 67%. So there's some fall off there between those two, right? Let's talk about sellers. Oh my God, there's even more fall off with sellers. So yep. it's kind of incredible to think about how many people are ready to give you business, um, but you might not be capitalizing on by building these relationships like we're talking about. Um, and last and, but not least, do you want way, to cover this me, one, what Craig? What really means is you didn't stay in their lives. You didn't build that friendship. And it was after the close, you disappeared. You did not do your job of fostering and keeping that relationship going. Absolutely. And then this next one is the most telling, which is, uh, the, the, the percentage who use their same agent again, when they bought or sold a property, I mean, Craig, that's mm -hmm. incredible. Oh yeah. It's, I mean, you're talking about a gigantic drop off and by the way, all the, this data is out of NAR's, uh, profile home buyer and sellers in 2020. And every year these stats hold up. I mean, the bottom line is the typical customer while you're working them is like, yeah, you were great. I'd recommend you. And by the time it comes around to either referring you or hiring you again, you've disappeared out of their lives. And that's yep. the key got to make sure these friendships stick. Right. And the, the reality is, and there's a, an old saying, which is not, what have you done for me? It's what have you done for me lately? And yep. Craig and I talked about that before this presentation, but there's, there is some loyalty there, but it's loyalty that has to be maintained. And yep. without that maintenance, the, the fall off is absolutely incredible. But with that maintenance, the opportunity is also incredible. So it's kind of that double edged sword um, where if you're doing this correctly, you can build that 100 percent referral business, 100 percent repeat business and not really mm -hmm. worry about chasing leads um, and chasing deals all the time. So definitely something to pay attention to. Now, Craig, we'll, we'll take you on to the next slide here. Um, yeah. 
All right. So walk me through this one. So business, what this is all about is business trends did an amazing study where they really looked at how much your existing database, your sphere of influence, right? The people you already know, already have worked with before, how much that really relates to gaining business. Because there's a huge difference between I'm going to try to work with a previous customer I already have a relationship with versus like a cold call where it's like, I'm going to try to generate a new lead and a new customer. The costs are exponentially different. So for example, your odds of gaining business out of a new lead are max out at 20%. Okay. Whereas your chance of getting business out of a previous customer, one you've already have a relationship with, is 70%. So that's a gigantic gap. And what it really shows you is you're, it's in your best interest to work your existing sphere of influence, not try to build up new leads because they're the mo most chance of being loyal to you. The next stat in this study okay, is what percent of a business of a company's business comes from its existing customers. That's 65%. Okay, so the majority of your business comes from people you already know, already work with. And a third stat that kind of even builds on this even more, okay, is 80% of a business's future profits come from only 20% of its bit of its existing customers. Okay. So your existing customers, think about it, they're probably gonna step up to the next property that might be more expensive, right? I mean, so kind of a natural regression for most people is you kind of start her home, more expensive home permanent home kind of a deal. So you're, the majority of your future profits, if you do it right, will come from people already sitting in your database. And that's the beauty of relationship and event-based marketing. Absolutely. That's incredible, Craig. I love those. I absolutely love those stats. And I, we yep. need to get that. We should do an infographic or something. Get those out to more people because this, yeah, this is a, a really idea. incredible uh, a piece of information I think we should share out sometime this week. So we're going to oh, now dive in right into the event marketing um, side of the world and get into some more details about how agents are successful with event marketing and some of the things, some of the tactics they use um, to really stand out from the crowd. Yep. All right. So one of them, and he's a good friend of mine and a great realtor, and he runs a top performing team in Gainesville, Florida, is Craig Wilburn. Uh, and his team has built a lot of their success on relationship-based marketing and event marketing. So for example, um, back in 2000, uh, 2010, they went to a local sports bar and said, spoke to the manager and said, we want to have a chicken weeding contest here. And the first year they did, the manager was like, all right, you know, you can have the two tables in the corner, pay for the wings to stay out of our way so we can operate the rest of the restaurant. And by year two, it was such a huge success. They shut down the entire restaurant once a year for this thing. Local TV stations cover it. He gets tons of social media buzz. And there's a line around the corner. People want to get into this fun event brought to you by the real estate team. Okay. So again, this isn't something that costs a lot of money. In fact, now it really doesn't cost them much anything because this the restaurant loves the event and they help sponsor it. Okay. But it really brings a lot of buzz in the community and brings business in for them. Um, another kind of event that him and his team do. If there's a major movie launch, right? Like for example, there was uh, for the last Star Wars movie, they ran out the movie theater, spoke to the managers at how much would it be to run out the movie theater just during like one of your slow matinee times. And then it was just his customers and prospective customers who were allowed to come. So it creates so much buzz in town. Oh man, you got to go to the Star Wars launch. That's amazing. Yeah, because yeah. I work with this real estate team. Another buddy of ours, uh, Gary Rogers, does a similar thing in Massachusetts. I think he might have actually done the, the same one for Star Wars. Um, yeah. But it, it's one of those things that it, these are the types of things that work in any market across the board, yep. anywhere you go. Um, you know, really, no matter who you are, you can make this work. Yeah. And by the way, if these ideas are too big baller for you. You don't have the budget to rent out the movie theater or whatever, we're going to give you some less expensive other ideas as well. But we're just giving an example here with his team. They've also done things like ice cream socials. So they'll just tell everyone in town, bring your kids for free ice cream if you come to this location at this time. Um, you know, they've done, uh, you know, snowball fights, bring in a snowball machine so all the kids can have a snowball fight. We have to do that in Florida. Sorry, Alex. <laughs> I was going to say, uh, a snowball yeah. machine. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, we need a machine in Florida uh, to have a snowball fight. But... <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's the funny. Idea, guys. It doesn't have to be running on a movie theater, but this kind of stuff creates so much buzz in the community and on social media 
and just keeps that pipeline of business coming for them. Yeah. Now, I, I do want to take a, a side note here. We are going to talk to um, the points about less expensive events, events where you really don't have to spend a ton of money, all that sort of stuff. But I do want to make a point very, very clear here, which is that every agent that we've talked to that tries to do something like this, that posts these type of events and really makes a commitment to it, they never turn back. They yep. start doing these things and go, oh, wow, the power that this has. Um, and when you talk to them about one of the, what are some of them, the best uh, marketing tactics that they use, they talk about events as being part of that. So yep. just keep that in mind that these investments pay, e even the ones that do cost money, um, pay back tenfold in, um, yep. in in the money you end up putting out. And over years, you usually figure out ways to not have to do uh, a lot in terms of spending money at all. So mm -hmm. just just keep that in mind um, as we go forward here with some of the, the less expensive ones. But even the ones that pop dollar uh, are a great investment in what you're doing. Yep. All right. Yeah. Okay. And by the way, it, to kind of kind of give an example of one that might be a whole nother level, um, it would be our next one. Um, which is uh, Zach Reynolds and Sheree Brown, who are the top um, team in the entire country for Next Home. Okay, um, I did a session with them at their convention and kind of you know really dug into what they do on their business and marketing side and how they're the number one team in the entire country in that in that franchise. Um, and one of the things they talked about is they literally dedicate thirty percent of their entire operating budget into reinvesting in the business. Uh, and now a lot of realtors do things like, I'm going to make sure I have top-notch photography and video, stuff like that. But they even talked about it from a customer loyalty standpoint with like crazy client perks you don't hear with a typical realtor. For example, um, if they have, let's say, an open house, they pretty much tell, and this is before this current period where houses are going in a day, right? Uh, but before that uh, situation, they would literally tell their, buy their home uh, owners, hey, we're going to get you a hotel for the night on the, you know, on the water, go enjoy, have a nice date with the wifey, go, go to the hotel and have the weekend. Um, we'll get you a massage while you're there. Like they would give them a nice little weekend package that way they, know, they knew the property would be cleared out and they could really have that open house event they wanted. Right. But crazy client perks like that, their customers love them and they keep referring business. I'm like, Oh my God, you got a whole weekend getaway brought to you by your realtor. Yep. Okay. Right. Um, so it's just a good example. And when it comes to event-based marketing, if you go to the next one, I don't know if I found anybody in the industry that does it better than these two. I mean, they have full-blown parties. And when I say parties, they're like, I was just doing a little bit of online research trying to figure out who they were before my, uh, my session with them. And I literally found their annual Halloween party being promoted on a Canadian website. Now, to give you an idea, they're in Southern California, which is nowhere near Canada. And yet their <laughs> Halloween party is being promoted in Canada. Thanks for the geography lesson, Greg. Seriously. <laughs> no, I mean, California is but nowhere the fact near that I, Canada. I literally, when I showed Zach okay. this, he was like, oh my God, I didn't realize <laughs> that one. But literally their parties have become epic in their community. I mean, they, they have Halloween parties and more of their parties to pull in more of the families. Um, they have uh, Fourth of July picnics. I mean, they're doing different parties throughout the year. That way, they're they're hitting different parts of their sphere, right? They have a fun one for all the adults. They have stuff for the families. Yep. I mean, it's just brilliant how they're doing it. So, and the other thing I want to mention with this is um, combinations of some of these events. So, I know mm -hmm. one brokerage combines their July Fourth and client appreciation parties where yep. they host a huge July 4th party, but then do an extra sp something special for their past clients, where there's like an extra gift bag or an extra yep. something that they give as like a special perk, a VIP type perk um, to their other clients. So client appreciation parties are hugely popular, work very well. I've heard a lot of agents who do those successfully. Um, but also mm -hmm. tagging on some client appreciation stuff onto your general uh, events like the July 4th. I've seen a lot of brokerages and agents and teams have success with that as well. Um, so it's something yep. you want to keep in mind in terms of what events you can sort of combine with each other uh, and what works well with each other. Absolutely. Cool. All right. So 
What are some other ones? I, I've heard of a whole bunch of of great events here, Craig, but I know you listed some out here. Yeah, um, I mean, I already mentioned the snowball buffet idea, right? Again, that might be more of a Florida thing than other parts of the country where you can just have a snowball fight. Mm -hmm. uh, but pictures with Santa, uh, ice cream socials, bowling or skating night. You just tell all of your contacts, hey, meet me at the bowling alley on this night. I'll buy the beer and the shoes, right? And we can go bowling or skating together. We're just having fun. Uh, I've heard of other ideas like paper shredding events. You just rent a paper shredding truck. And to everyone in town to bring their documents to your office, wherever you want to do this. Um, I've heard of meals. Either you're a great cook or maybe you bring in a professional chef just for your kind of, you know, VIP customers. Or you invite them once a year to a lunch or dinner at your home or at a restaurant. Right. But the idea is, again, you're bringing your customers together. Yep. And now they connect and become friends. That's where the loyalty really happens. Here's the other one I'm going to mention, Craig. Um so two things. One is uh, that I didn't see mentioned here is golf. Golf is yep. huge. Golf tournaments. Um, people love getting involved in those sort of fun golf tournaments. I've seen those be very successful. But the other thing is with bowling or golf or tennis or whatever sport that you want to do and host an event around, holding leagues can actually be another way to do an event. Um, having your own little invite golf league. Tuesday, Wednesday mm -hmm. evening, play nine, whatever it is with friends, um, where you're the one who's rotating it up, so on. A lot of times, uh, golf courses, bowling alleys, things like that will give you a crazy good deals if you're going to host a league because you're going to guarantee them business, not just for that one night, but that people are going to come back over and over and over again. So think about yep. that in terms of it doesn't just necessarily have when you're when we're talking events it doesn't necessarily just have to be a single few hours done with event um hosting i've even friends that host board game nights that yep. once a month they host a board game night and they invite their friends their clients or so on um and the folks that show up show up and they have a bunch of different board games and things for people to play and so on so don't think about this as just a one-time, once-a-year, July 4th or whatever it is event. Think about these more as consistent things you can do to drive engagement and give better experiences to those people that you want to drive business from. So, yes. And the other thing that I'll come to in here, you've got to also think, a lot, especially your buyers, they're moving to a town they might not know anyone. Mm -hmm. So they're looking to make friends. And if you're the one that helps make that happen, awesome. Yep. Absolutely. In fact, if you're that center point in those uh, relationships and in those friendships that you're introducing people between and all that sort of stuff, trust me, you are the one they are sending referrals to, they're telling about, they're all that sort of stuff. Um, because mm -hmm. you'd be amazed how many people hear about deals on a consistent basis. In fact, we, we do these numbers. We've done these in other webinars. You can make $110,000 from, I think it's 144 of your contacts. Within 144 of your contacts, there is $110,000 worth of business every single year. And that's just their business. That's not referrals. That's not people they're sending you. That's none of that sort of stuff. That is literally just transactions in those 144 people um, allows you to make roughly $110,000 a year. So being that center point to a small number of people is incredibly powerful when it comes to uh, marketing and, and events. You know, I want to dive into another thing here, though, Craig, which is, and you and I have talked about this, this last year um, really kind of made us adapt with some of our events. And one of the things that we did with Agent Inner Circle to adapt is we did um, a few different blogs and videos and so on on how to host digital events, where yep. you're hosting things like um, a, a pumpkin carving contest at Halloween is one of the ones that we did. And you're, you're providing people, um, you know, pumpkin carving contests and costume contests and all that sort of stuff inside of a Facebook group in a digital manner. So people didn't, this last year, didn't have to come out and go to those events and all that sort of stuff. But what I want you to start thinking about for this coming year is that the more that you can do to drive engagement into a digital group, the better job you're going to be able to do to stay in touch with these people on a long-term basis and then get them to come to your next events. So this year, let's say you are hosting a pumpkin carving contest in person. 
Well, there's no reason you shouldn't do a Facebook group as well for your event. Host the pumpkin carving contest on that as well. And when people are done carving in person with you at this cool event that you're hosting, well, guess what? They take a picture of it and they post it right into that group. So what? They're at a live event. They can interact with digital too. That makes everybody, even the people who can't make it out, feel included, right? There, You never know why people can't maybe make it to your event. Maybe it's a family issue. Maybe it's a medical issue. Including them no matter what and making sure they have an avenue to participate is really, really fantastic. Um, the other thing is it allows you to get feedback as well as some input on what you're doing for the event. So if you start this before your event, you can start asking questions in a poll. What type of food? What type of music? What's people's favorite drinks? What sort of things should we have for games? Right. If you have a bunch of different ideas of games, you can see what your community wants and what the people that might be attending this event um, have to do. So getting online participants, being able to follow up after the event are inc it's incredibly important because you need that method to, as we said, maintain that loyalty over time and not just once a year, twice a year, you know, a couple times here and there because it will fall off uh, over time as you go. Now. I know uh, gifts at these events, um, as well as some just personalized gifts in general, Craig, are things that you uh, always recommend doing along with some of this stuff. Yeah. yeah, to me, it all ties back again to that relationship side. And I always kind of say, um, I, I'm sure at this point, almost every realtor has heard the pitch. Companies like Cutco, as a closing gift, you buy some a bottle of wine, you buy them a gift card, whatever it is, they consume it and forget about you with a very short period of time. So it's being more thoughtful in long-term your closing gift ideas is another aspect of this whole event marketing, whether it's an actual party that you're throwing or just your regular closing gifts. It's being more personal with your closing gift ideas. In fact, one of my students one time made me even rethink this even more. They were like, you know, Craig, I, I agree with you so much. I always try to come up with a more personal gift idea. And what really set it off for me was one time I was working with this young family. They were so excited about getting finally getting a house with a pool. And that's all they talked about the entire weeks leading up to the closing was how excited they were about the pool. So I went out to the local pool store. I got an entire gift basket of all towels and toys for the pool and wingies for the kids and everything. And they literally, when I gave them that closing gift, the entire family ran up and hugged me, invited me over for barbecue that next weekend, like their little housewarming party. I was at it. Now we do w monthly web uh, barbecues together. And it was just really hit home about you really got to think more personal. Gift cards are forgotten about very quickly. Get something, get to know your customers and make that closing gift idea a friendship piece as well. Yep. Um, now, one thing I always uh, like to mention is something ideally that stays in the home and something <laughs> ideally that will make them think of you in a helpful way. So something that is helpful to their lives. In that case, they needed things for the pool. They wanted things for the pool. You gave that to them. And I'm sure every time they think of those things, they go, oh, that agent, that person was so wonderful. Same sort of thing Absolutely. with a gift that you want to give. You want to make sure it sticks around. And ideally, it's something that helps those folks in their everyday life. That, that is the ticket uh, to a great gift that goes along with some of these events. Um, and mm -hmm. as I said, when you start combining your client appreciation into some of these events, uh, you can continue giving them gifts along with some of these things that you're doing and, and really making them feel VIP. It's just a, a whole no another level of, uh, of working with people. And I think the goal, Craig, is, is what we're going to talk about next year, which is that word of mouth, yeah. right? Well, it's the, it's, so now you're friends with them. Now you're staying in their lives. Well, this is a stat I use all the time is 93% of consumers make a purchase or hire based on a peer recommendation online, such as online ratings, reviews, recommendations, or in search of. So we've already talked about the importance of building that friendship, staying in their lives, fostering that friendship, but you should always take it to that next step of asking your customers, can you give me that online review? If somebody's out on Facebook or in next door asking for realtor in the area, can you please recommend me, right? Because that is where a lot of businesses are in these days is that post-transaction relationship. And those re recommendations and reviews are gold for that. They really, really are. Absolutely. And you'd be amazed how many of those uh, you end up getting from events. 
um, people start reviewing these events. I mean, as, as Craig mentioned yep. earlier, websites in other countries start reviewing these events. And you never know <laughs> um, where that word of mouth ends up going when you do start uh, building those types of events up and up. So the more you can do to ask for feedback and ask for involvement afterward um, to promote it, the better that you're going to do with those um, that sphere of influence and that word of mouth that you're going to get from the group that you just invited. Um, yep. You know, that is a great segue into what we got coming up next, Craig. So yep. I'm just going to take folks right into it because um, we do want to talk a lot more about reviews, um, but all about reviews when it comes to your entirety of your business. This is a topic that I've been teaching for years now. Craig has also been teaching it for years. Um, we have some fun topics coming up next week. So uh, seven eight next Thursday. Um, obviously, with the July Fourth holiday, we are not going to be doing anything um, next Monday, uh, the fifth. But the eighth on Thursday, we are going to be um, here live in the group talking about turning reviews into leads and how you can get more reviews, how you can deal with bad reviews and how you can turn that um, and those reviews into more business. Then on 712 on Monday, back on our Monday schedule, we are going to be talking about automating your lead generation. So some of the things that you can do to automate how you're, you're driving new leads and, and generating new business. Um, Craig and I absolutely love automation. We do it a ton uh, in our own businesses. So, and we work with a lot of agents to do that as well. So we're going to be extending that um, and all those tips and tricks to you. And then uh, last but certainly not least, on 719, we have the Leads Masterclass where Craig and I are going to be talking about uh, pretty much everything to do with how to generate leads, um, mm -hmm. how to bring in leads, how to bring in good leads, um, because there is a, a significant difference. And uh, and then what you can do to, to work those leads once you get them. So... Um, if you haven't, I put all those links in the chat, by the way. Yeah. So all those links are in chat. Um, if you are interested, definitely head on over and mark yourself as going. Uh, the other thing is the leads masterclass is still at its lower price. So we offer folks uh, an early purchase discount on that uh, on our masterclasses. So if you go up, you sign up today, uh, you can still get that early access deal. Um, so definitely check that on out. And, uh, otherwise Craig, anything else, my friend, before we close this down today? No, I think that, I think we hit as much as we could, but again, your sphere of influence, your current contacts are your gold mine. So, Absolutely. and don't think of them as a gold mine, turn them into friends and keep in, in their lives as friends. And that will lead to a lot of business. Absolutely. Well, I'm going to give us a segue right into the closing here. Once again, presented to you by... Service for Life and the Real Estate Technology Institute. I'm going to mention Service for Life first this time because we've been talking about all about sphere of influence and relationship marketing today. And that is the bread and butter of what Service for Life does, um, what my organization does, which is make sure that you're Absolutely. able to contact uh, agents on a month or, or sorry, not agents. You make sure you're able to contact your clients, your sphere on a monthly basis to give them value on a monthly basis so that uh, you drive business. We include a lot of referral programming, reports, things to qualify people, all that sort of stuff in it. But we've been helping agents build that type of sphere of influence marketing business for over 20 years, doing it successfully for that entire time. So if you're interested in that, definitely check out serviceforlife.com. Additionally, if you are interested in any sort of technology and marketing learning and uh, the free agentinnercircle.com blog does not give it to you, uh, which there's a ton that, that RETI has that we don't. Um, head on over to reti.us. There are literally thousands of videos on technology and marketing to improve your business. Uh, there is so, there are so many just detailed tutorials about how to specifically use different tools, different things like that. Um, and it's a very inexpensive membership over there. In fact, you might already have a membership. A lot of associations have picked this up and included it as a member benefit. So definitely check out uh, if your association already has it. Um, and if not, sign up for yourself. It's worth it. All right. So thank you, as always, um, to my good friend, Craig Grant. Um, anything to close with, Craig? Nope. I think we, think we did a great job nailing it all. So hopefully everyone it. 
and takes it to heart and starts working that sphere. Absolutely. Well, if anybody has any questions, please let us know. Uh, until next time, I am Alex Camilio, CEO of the Agent Inner Circle. As always, I have my good friend Craig Grant with me. And, uh, well, best wishes for your success.